around here. Traditional Vietnamese music is already like different from our Western sensibilities. So I never know if they're intentionally singing flat or if it's just a different musical scale. Hi everyone, welcome to my collage breakdown. I want to ask you, are you a fan of collage? Do you ever make collage? It's one of my favorite media. My name is Brian Hoffmeister. I am a visual artist living in Vietnam. Um, I used to be primarily a, an oil painter and um, until I moved to Asia about three years ago and uh, to sort of work as minimally as possible, I work on paper, and that typically means pen, watercolor, uh, collage, uh, gouache, but in this video we're gonna talk about collage. As I said, collage is one of my favorite media. Um, I don't get to do it as much living here because I part of collage is amassing lots of material and I just don't have a lot as of now. Um, but one of the things I like about it is you can sort of work with it without worrying about your technical skill. You don't have to draw a cool drawing or like paint something realistic or anything. You just kind of cut paper and mix it together and it's all creativity. That's what I really like about it. So uh, when I started this video, I wanted to think about like some famous collage artists that you know have influenced me and I was having trouble. And I realized that like, my biggest influence is, Charles, or is uh, Joseph Cornell, and uh, Joseph Cornell uh, is more of an assemblage artist. He did collage work as well, but he's best known for his assemblage, which is kind of like a three-dimensional form of collage, and you could see in his work that he, uh, he embraced a real sort of surrealistic attitude, and like his work is very... Um, just mysterious, which I, I've always really appreciated. It really captured my imagination. Um, I, I discovered Joseph Cornell at a very young age because I lived very close to, or not very close to, but I lived near the Art Institute in Chicago growing up, and we would go there on field trips when I was little, and I just remember being in the Joseph Cornell room and like finding it so amazing and different from all the other work that I'd seen. Um, maybe that had something to do with it too. So uh, when talking about Cornell, uh, it also reminds me a lot of my earlier work, which um, my very first show where I showed art to the general public was uh, all assemblage boxes. So you could see for sure how Cornell influenced me, especially when I was younger. Um, and I probably would still be making assemblage if I had the time and the space because it's all about collecting cool materials and um, just like with paper uh, you just have to collect it and, and and make these associations and it's really difficult when you're living abroad and you know I, every time I move cities I just bring a couple of suitcases so it's really at least with paper you can pack it. So in my last video, I talked about inspiration techniques and, um, and this piece was no different. Uh, I was really um, influenced by uh, this image here that I saw on Instagram by at Defer Collages, um, who uh, made this piece. And I was just really, I think most affected by that's it's really constrained color palette i really like uh gravitated towards that but i also really liked the sort of vertical lines that were very sort of um controlled whereas a lot of the piece the rest of it was chaotic so it was kind of like that balance of control versus chaos which obviously you guys know that i'm into so uh i thought that was kind of a cool um bit of inspiration and that's what really led me to this piece, which is permutation number 522. So uh, to talk about this piece, I'm just kind of going to go from left to right because I think that's the most direct way. 
Um, right here, uh, this little piece on the left is from a, a cutting from a German Bible. And uh, I've had this German Bible for a really long time. I know I've had it since at least the, back when I created this piece, which is like a screen printing piece, uh, back in, uh, when was it? It was August of 2011. And um, I probably had it longer than that. And, and, it's, and all I have left from it with beer here in Vietnam is like one like piece that's already been cut up. So I have just like this little bit left. So I don't have much more of it left with me, but I have it back at home in storage. So I wish I would have brought more pages of it just cause I really like the look of it. It's like, not only is German kind of a cool looking language, but on top of it, this font is just like, so like medieval looking, it's very cool. Um, <clears throat> next is, uh, these, these two next pieces are from a Russian newspaper. Um, and I picked up this newspaper on a layover in Moscow when we were going to Barcelona a few years ago. Um, it was one of the weirdest layovers I've ever had. Um, they didn't give us our tickets for the second flight um, at, the, at, at the ticketing agent in Shanghai. Like you had to get it uh, during the layover. So we get, we get off the plane and we're like ushered into this little room and there's like a, a kiosk and these, wi these women are just yelling out people's names and like everyone is just crowded around the kiosk and like it's very chaotic, it was very strange and a little like kind of scary. But um, anyway, it's very memorable. And then after we got our tickets, we just kind of like walked around the Moscow airport, which was like, like any other airport in a lot of ways. Uh, but it was a uh, Aeroflot, I think. Aeroflot was not a good experience. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, one piece from a Russian newspaper, and then uh, that other piece with these little mouths is uh, also from that same newspaper. I got a couple more pieces with these like faces and mouths that line up really well, so I, I really like them. Um, it's the only um, non word piece in in this one besides the gray one on the end um and i uh i just kind of like the visual look of those mouths so um i'm happy that i found those um <clears throat> next to that is a vietnamese newspaper i have no idea what any of it says uh and i don't really remember where i picked up this newspaper um unfortunately but i did want to represent vietnam because i live here um, next to that is one of the two pieces of a map from a uh, Time Life World Library um, from, I think, 1954 or 1952. I can't remember. I have one from France and one from Japan, and this one's from the France uh, edition. Um, and I picked this, both of these up um, at a little roadside book boutique, or, or not uh, Boutique is very the wrong word for it. It was a little roadside book shop, if you could even call it a shop. It was just stacks and stacks of books uh, in Chennai in India. Um, this was back in January of this year. So kind of just like right when pandemic was starting, but before people knew it was going to get as bad as it was. And it wasn't even in India almost at all. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, I just had to like climb into these books and like find these things and I'm happy I found them. I, I didn't even know that I was going to be using them and I, what I really wanted was Hindi books because I thought if I was going to do collage I wanted like various languages in it and I couldn't find any Hindi books. It was all like English books and they were kind of mostly boring and I wanted older ones and these were, these were quite old so I'm, I'm happy about it. Um, and I don't know what it is about old paper but that seems to really draw me more than like if I go and get like some glossy magazine, like those don't tend to make me want to use them. So I'm happy that I found those two. <clears throat> but in this map, you could see, uh, if you look closely, you could see that uh, it features Aix-en-Provence, which is uh, the city I studied in when I was uh, in school in college. Um, and I studied very classic oil painting and these are a couple of my paintings. Um, yeah, so uh, in a lot of this collage, like some of the words have meaning and some of them don't, but I feel like the, the significance is almost more important to me than the meaning, if that makes sense. And um, the significance of Aix-en-Provence is pretty big with me because I really felt like I became an artist at that time. Um, and so 
uh, again, this feels pretty significant to me. Um, <clears throat> next to that is a Hindi newspaper. Um, and this piece includes the date of the newspaper, which I think is pretty cool and I'm kind of, I'd like to continue using the dates in these pieces because I feel like it grounds the piece in time, which is very cool. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of obsessed with like including like the date somewhere in these pieces because it kind of gives you some sort of context. Um, in, the, in the center here is the like a headline from a Russian newspaper. Um, I mostly just like the Cyrillic font and um, the Cyrillic alphabet and I do love this salmon color and it fits very well into this palette that I've used in this piece. Oh yeah, I, I also wanted to say that you could see the um, sort of like this hole on the bottom of this, this piece from the map is from a bookworm and I, I'll talk about it in another uh, video but um, there were all these like little bookworm things from these encyclopedias and I actually really like that about it. Uh, so it sort of like adds this other dimension. Um, okay, so next to that is uh, we have more Russian with a sort of a wheat background, which I liked. Um, and then next to that is uh, a Chinese, um, some Chinese text and it's from what I would call a sort of atlas, like a world atlas. It just has pages and pages about different countries and has flags and stuff. And um, I picked this up at, in Tianzifang in um, Shanghai uh, last year. And it was like a really good find because first of all, it had a bunch of Chinese texts, which is exactly what I wanted. I love the, the, the thinness of the pages. They're like not super thick. So they're really almost tissuey. And I also like that um, inside the book as like a bonus, I found several cut out pieces of Mao and I have used them in pieces in the past. And um, while I was living in China, I was kind of afraid to show them because like artists are not allowed to be political. And even though I feel like these pieces are apolitical, they're just like, they just happen to have Mao in them and they revere Mao and Mao is a good person currently. Like I would figure, oh, maybe it'd be safe. But I was even told by someone like, oh, you might want to not show those to people because it's too political. Anyway. Um, I, I do still have some of the Mao pictures, so I probably will try and do a few more because um, I do like these. So next to that is a piece from a Vietnamese diary. And not, not only is the color of the background of this cool, but I just love the fact that it's like handwritten by some Vietnamese person in the past. And this one also has a date and you can see on the bottom. It's either uh, June 3rd or March 6th, 1984, depending on how you write your date. And I think here they do it that it's March 6th, but I'm not totally sure. Um, but either way, it's 1984, which I think is really cool. So we've got like this breadth of time and this one piece, and I just think that's super cool. I don't know how other people feel about that, but I like it. So next to that, we have the, just this plain gray piece, which is just to add some balance to the piece. And then next to that is uh, from a Hindi newspaper, and it's primarily used for its color and um, and just to sort of frame out the that side of the the, the piece and give it some weight. Um, and then, um, other than that, I signed it down on the bottom in pencil. And that kind of concludes the the breakdown of this piece. So tell me, what did you think? Did you do you, you want to see more of videos like this one where I talk about an individual piece? Um, did I answer all your questions? Did I leave any questions unanswered? If so, please leave a comment in the uh, comments below. Um, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell to get notifications when I publish new videos. I do try and publish about once a week. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.